Hello everyone. A very good evening. Today we will discuss about hematopoietic stem cell transplantation. It is a very important 5 mark question in your uh, theory exam, university theory exam. Okay. So starting off with the introduction, hematopoietic stem cell transplantation, it involves a replacement of entire hematopoietic system that is being defective or dysfunctional. Okay. So this hematopoietic stem cell transplantation, this involves a replacement of your entire hematopoietic system that is uh, entire bone marrow that is being I mean which is being produced uh, RBCs, WBCs and platelets it is replacing entire of your hematopoietic system which is defective or being in dysfunctional state ok here we have types of hematopoietic stem transplantation there are two types one is your autologous transplantation another one will be your allogenic hematopoietic stem cell transplantation okay so autologous meaning it is by using the patient's own stem cell it is called as autologous stem cell transplantation it is using the patient's own stem cells while allogenic stem cell transplantation means using of a healthy donor stem cells. We are using a healthy donor stem cells. So what are the indication for your autologous hematopoietic stem cell transplantation? So the indication for this autologous remains like uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma and your neuroblastoma. So in these conditions like this Hodgkin and in your neuroblastoma uh, like grade stage 3 uh, stage 3 neuroblastoma when you are giving a uh, stage 4 uh, stage 4 neuroblastoma when you are giving a high dose of uh, chemotherapy because because they require high dose chemotherapy to eliminate all the tumor cells so when you give this high dose uh, of chemotherapy it will lead to myelosuppression so to compensate for that myelosuppression you need to transfuse your stem cells hematopoietic stem cells to this patients so for the patients with Hodgkin lymphoma and neuroblastoma before starting your high dose chemotherapy you take takes the stem cells that is present in the patient okay you uh, you retrieve the stem cells that is present in the patient and after giving your high dose chemotherapy and the patient going in for myelosuppression then you use uh, the patient's own stem cells to compensate for the myelosuppression okay understood so in these condition who oh, requiring high dose of chemotherapy the patients will require high dose of chemotherapy uh, for their tumor clearance this high dose of chemotherapy will lead to myelosuppression right so to compensate for this myelosuppression so to compensate we reinfuse so we reinfuse patient's own stem cells this patient's own stem cells these are taken before the starting of your chemotherapy okay so this was collected prior to the or prior to giving your chemotherapy so this is about your autologous stem cell transplantation next is regarding your allogenic stem cell transplantation we will see the indications for your allogenic stem cell transplantation so allogenic stem cell transplantation what are its indications so for easy remembrance this indication has been classified into red cell disorders white blood cell disorders it is wbc disorders third one will be your platelet disorders this is platelet platelet disorders Fourth will be your stem cell disorders. Fifth one will be your metabolic disorders. Okay. So we have uh, classified the indications for your allogenic stem cell transplantation in these five subheadings. So starting off with the red cell disorders. The causes will be, I mean uh, the indications are 
वन विल बी तेलेमिया मेज सेकेंड इज सिकल से लनीमिया third will be your pure red cell aplasia third is your pure red cell aplasia going over with your wbc disorders first one will be your high risk leukemia second one for hodgkin's lymphoma so hodgkin's lymphoma you can give both allogenic and as well as autologous stem cell transplantation and also for your stage 4 neuroblastoma next will be your cml that is chronic myeloid uh, leukemia next can be your primary immunodeficiency primary immunodeficiency disorders also requires your hematopoietic stem cell transplantation among the platelet disorder you have only one indication that is your glansman thrombasthenia next among the stem cell disorders you have acquired aplastic anemia second one you have bone marrow failure syndromes next among the metabolic disorders first will be your mucopolysaccharidosis second one will be your lysosomal storage disorder among the lysosomal storage disorder it is your gaucher's disease third one will be your metachromatic leukodystrophy so these are the indications for your what is this allogenic stem cell transplantation so we have uh, separated into red cell disorders white blood cell disorders platelet stem cell disorders and metabolic disorders so that you don't leave even a one topic while writing your university exam the uh, university theory exam question okay next will be your steps what are the steps that are being involved in your hematop uh, this uh, allogenic hematopoietic stem cell transplantation first is the choosing the patient you have to choose a right patient for your uh, this hsct that is hematopoietic stem cell transplantation so the disease status of the patient is must you must know the disease status of the patient if the patient is having some malignancy when you are uh, uh, going to have do a hematopoietic stem cell transplantation for a patient with leukemia uh, the patient should be in a remission stage with no minimal residual disease so that is for leukemic patient or from uh, for any malignancy patient the patient should be in remission with no minimal residual disease okay thalassemia patient for thalassemia patient we have separate classification for whom to give this hematopoietic stem cell transplantation that is the patient should uh, have an optimizing transfusion and a chelation therapy so for that they have used a classification called as pesero classification this pesero classification it includes it is mainly includes or it is based upon it is mainly based upon your ferritin level hemat hepatocaly and your liver iron content so it is mainly based upon your ferritin hepatomegaly and your liver iron content okay so here we have class 1 class 2 and class 3 for the leukemia patient according to your pesero classification when you give a uh, hematopoietic stem cell transplant to a class 3 patient that will be resulting in a severe uh, uh, failure so you have to give the transfusion that is hematopoietic stem cell transfu transfusion mainly to a class 1 pay belong into class 1 pesero classification patient sometimes in like uh, this immunodeficiency like in primary immunodeficiency for example in severe combined immunodeficiency this requires an emergency treatment with your hematopoietic stem cell transplantation even if they have infection during the course you have to do a emergency management because your infection cannot be cure until your hematopoietic stem cell transplantation is done in this severe combined immunodeficiency patient so they need to be treated immediately fine next so this is regarding your right patient second 
it is about your donor selection whom should you from whom should you take a hematopoietic stem cell so to find a compatible donor through you have to do a you have to, it is done through your human leukocyte antigen this human leukocyte antigen this is being present in your chromosome number 6 okay this human leukocyte antigen will have a two class the class of class 1 and class 2 in class 1 it uh, involves a b and c and in class 2 it involves d p d q and d r next to tell the patient is being i um, mean uh, this donor is being a 100 percentage compatible or uh, having a full match to tell that the donor is having a full match so they should be compatible with hla a b c and also with d q b1 and d r b1 so they should be compatible with hla a b c and d q b1 and d r b1 so sample for how will you take the sample for this hla matching so sample for this hla matching or hla typing can be taken from the peripheral blood sample so it can be taken as a peripheral blood sample or your buckle swab okay fine next supposing if the ch this chance of finding a full matched family donor is one nearly 30% it's nearly only 30% uh, for other 70% what you have to do you have to do an alternate alternate donor alternate hematopoietic stem cell transplantation donor you have to arrange for for remaining because only like 30 percentage of the population will give a full matched family donor uh, for remaining 70 percentage you have to do an alternate donor okay this alternate donor can be either unrelated full matched donor can be either unrelated full match full match sense sorry full match in the sense they are being compatible with their hla class 1 a b and c and hla class 2 d r b1 and for dq b1 it can be an unrelated full match donor or it can be a haplo identical it can be haplo identical stem cell transplantation haplo identical meaning half matched can be half matched donor so this haplo identical this half matched donor no so they will be compatible for 3 by 6 or for 5 by 10 okay this when you need and so you can if none of this that is full matched family donor is not available unrelated full matched donor is not available then you can use with the haplo identical donor so after doing a donor selection then you will go in for conditioning conditioning of the patient okay this conditioning involves the use of chemotherapy so this involves the use of your chemotherapy so what is the purpose of doing this conditioning so it is to eliminate it is mainly to eliminate the patient stem cell second one second point it is to create space for your new donor derived stem cell you have to create a new space for the donor derived stem cell third reason is to provide adequate immune suppression to a host to give adequate sorry to give adequate immune suppression okay so while doing this conditioning this helps in reducing your graft versus or your graft reduction this conditioning helps to decrease your graft rejection and your graft versus host disease it also sometimes eradicates your residual uh, leukemic stem cells in the malignancies okay so the regimens that can i'm just tell examples for conditioning okay so the regimens of the chemotherapy that can be used for conditioning are it can involve cyclopropamide second it can involve u cell fan third it can involve thio fourth you can use melzen fifth you can use total body ejection okay these are some of the conditioning treatment next conditioning you are going to transfuse your stem cell 
this is your fourth point okay that you are giving the stem cell to the pub you select the stem cell what will be the source of stem cell so the source of stem cell can be one from your peripheral blood uh, okay it can be a peripheral blood from the donor or it can be a bone marrow from the donor or it can from the cord blood either of this the three you can use it as a source of your stem cell so the, the i mean these three also have a difference between their engraftment which will go in for earliest engraftment engraftment meaning when you transfuse this stem cell to the patient the time required to for this stem cell to go to the bone marrow of the patient and to produce their rbc wbc and platelets is called as the engraftment so each has different time of the engraftment okay so the time period that is required for engraftment of peripheral blood uh, stem cell is 10 to 14 days bone marrow it will be 14 to 21 days or cord blood it will be 21 to 28 days so the earliest engraftment will be taking place in your peripheral blood stem cell okay so this is about the stem cell infusion you have conditioned the patient then you have given your stem cell fifth you have to go for immune suppression after giving stem cell also you have to go for immune suppression therapy the patient why then only there will be decreased risk of your tuberous associated disease or after reduction will be uh, less okay next for this uh, immune suppression the drugs that are used prophylactically so the drugs that are used prophylactically are tacrolimus cyclosporin methotrexate tg and mycophilet these are the drugs that can be used uh, prophylactically to the patient who are receiving a hematopoietic stem cell transplantation six you have to give a supportive care patient they are being most you know suppressed they will acquire any infection immediately so they are i mean mainly they are at a high risk of acquiring a gram negative bacterial sepsis so that the patients need to be on antifungal to so the patients need on antifungal and viral prophylaxis so the pen needs to be on antifungal and antiviral prophylaxis next post hematopoietic stem cell transplantation what is the survival rate so post hematopoietic sorry hematopoietic transplantation what is the survival so the survival rate for a patient being uh, this hematopoietic stem cell transplantation that is main patients of thalassemia major so the patient in a major or their survival will be 90 to 70 percentage for other malignant condition for other malignant condition the survival rate will be between 60 to 70 percentage okay so this is about your hematopoietic stem cell transplantation i have taken a whole of this article from the ijpp ijpp hematology textbook only okay which i have shared in our telegram group uh, so i hope this video will be very helpful for your uh, this university exam thank you thank you so much